What's going on guys? Sin for the win here. We are back with our franchise mode as the Seattle Vikings. The Stanley Cup champion Seattle Vikings. What a playoff run that we just had. Won the first round in six, the second round in seven, the third round in seven, and the Stanley Cup in six. And now here we are at the draft. We uh, Arizona's pick is the 10th overall for us, so we should be able to get a nice top six guy for that. So that's not bad. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, get to it. Oh, really? <laughs> I guess I'll check it right here. I might as well pin some guys that I know I'm going to want to take. All right, let's sort by the potential here. So... This guy, defensive defenseman, righty. We have plenty of those guys, really, so. I'll pin him anyway, but I probably won't grab him. This guy's yet another defensive defenseman. I'll just pin him. The two-way guy I'd be most interested in. Oh, man, we got a lot of freaking guys pinned here. I won't pin. Nah, no, there's so many freaking defensive defensemen. All right, well, hold on. Does this guy have less weaknesses? No, it's always the freaking skating that they're weak on. Skating. And skating. You know what? I'm just going to not have those guys pinned anymore. I don't want weak skaters anymore. Alright, uh, grab that guy too, because he's a gem. Yeah, we'll have those guys pinned here. And we already have, uh, these two guys pinned. This grinder, I think... Ooh. This guy's new. Wow, this guy's actually pretty damn good for, uh, what he is. So, let's pin him as well. And then that'll pretty much be the guys that we're going to choose from here in this draft. A lot of them are earlier, though. We actually don't have any really mid-rounders. Yeah. Now, this guy. I don't... Th mm. Well, these guys are mid-rounders. Never mind. Yeah, okay, okay. It's a bit better than I thought. But those early rounders, actually, we might have to pick and choose. So, we will do that when it comes to it. Yeah. We'll do that when it comes to it. All right, well, those are the guys we're going to pin here. Okay, retirements. Let's see. I don't think anyone on our team retired. But Ovechkin does retire. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> 1,013 goals. I'm pretty sure that beat Gretzky's record. I'm pretty sure it did. Wow, look at that. His total points, 1832. You know what? I got to check that right now. Yeah, Ovechkin not only broke the record, he actually kind of shattered it. Gretzky had 894 goals in his career. <laughs> Ovechkin beat that by over 100. That is kind of crazy. Now, obviously, he didn't get close to the points, but my goodness. Ovechkin, he is the new NHL leader in goals in his career. Breaking the 1,000 mark. With 1,013, that is incredible. Good job, Ovechkin. Backstrom also retires. So, Backstrom and Ovechkin retire the same year. On different teams, though, Kopitar in St. Louis retires at age 38. How good was he? Yeah, makes sense. Marchand retires in Florida. Maybe could have played another year with his play style. But, again, his play style. Got to worry about injuries later on in your career. Max Pacioretty didn't quite hit 1,000 points. What the hell? <laughs> 28 goals, 4 assists in his last year. Yeah, it might be time. Uh, Van Riemsdyk. Uh, Kyle Turris, Bobby Ryan. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what Edmonton was paying Ryan. <laughs> Lou Cheech, good riddance. Oh, okay. Uh, Atkinson, Bodker, uh, Hoffman. Those look like most of the main names in there. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. Oops. Yeah, goalies. There we are. All right. Oh, Carey Price retires at age 38. So, Carey Price retires. Ben Bishop retires. Martin Jones retires. That is 36. Don't really have him scouted much, so. Uh, Reimer, Bernier, Talbot. So, uh, some pretty uh, sizable names retiring this year. A lot of guys who were mainstays in the NHL, for the most part, retired in the goaltender end of things. All right, not bad. I'm pretty sure we didn't have any retirements. I think it starts it on you if you have any retirements. I'm not too sure, but I don't think we would. We don't have anyone really that old, unless Ekman Larson retired, but he clearly didn't. Okay. So here we go. The draft is coming up now. Before we do that, I'm going to check on, see if anyone won the contest. All right. Yeah. So unfortunately, no one got two or more correct in their predictions. So there won't be any winners put on screen, but that's okay. It was kind of a weird year. <laughs> There's one goalie who made it and Jake Bean of all people winning the most points and uh, Tavares tied with Kochi 
winning the most points on the forward end of things in the league. So, yeah, unfortunate, but it happens. It's, this year's definitely a lot more random, so the winners, when you win it, it's a bit more of a bragging rights than it was last year. So, okay, draft time, and we're going to go into it. I'm, I was, I'm still holding off on some of the contracts. I'm hoping in the RFA stage that they want a bit less, or maybe they change their mind about not wanting to go. But Toronto's got the first overall pick. So, all right, go for it, Toronto. We have the 10th here. So, let's just check this out. Let's see who's listed to go 10th or around that area, and see if it's someone that we really want. Well, there's this guy. Not a guarantee. Central scout ranking. It's this guy. Two-way defender. Top four guy. Did produce some points, but he wasn't not the strongest of the leagues here. Good leadership, balance, and offensive instincts, but lacks teammate utilization. Similar to Petrangelo, but he's a good locker room guy. So, that's always good to see. Good locker room guy, but perhaps there's something else we want. There's a sniper. There's actually, unfortunately, not any role players. Besides this guy, Kali Carlson. Ooh. Ooh, wow. That guy would be really good to have. But, you know, if there's not anything that we really want, maybe we move the pick back. Or we just take this guy. Might as well just kind of take this guy. Yeah. And we don't really don't need anything anymore at this point, so. Kind of just grabbing stuff to grab it. And our next pick, do we even have... No, I think we... Tra did we trade our pick? No, we do have it in the 32nd, but obviously that's not going to get us much. Yeah, I might just pick something here. We'll see what's available there. I'm not going to really move it up. I was considering moving it back, and I still might do that. Because there's not anything great around here. We have plenty of good defensemen. So if there's something like that I would really want to move back for, I'll definitely do that, but Biosma here, left wing grinder, top six. Puck per section balance and strength is hmm. Sniper, two way forward. I was really hoping for a center, but there's literally no centers here. <laughs> yeah, there really isn't any like centers at all, which kinda sucks. In the top area. It's all wing. Well, there are. Oh, hold on. I did miss a couple. But I don't have them scouted hilariously. And they're a sniper and a playmaker. So I could take a chance on him. I could do that. This guy's a bit shorter. He did put up a lot of points. This guy put up a lot of points as well. Okay, this guy has no weaknesses. That's very good. Whereas this guy lacks size. 6-1 play. I might move back or just pick this guy off you know what i'll probably just pick him um off board because he's uh well central scout him has him like uh ranked at 13th we have him ranked at 12 so i might just pick off the board here since i don't want any of those defensemen i might just go off the board and not worry about trading back and stuff like that seems like a better idea all right let's see that toronto yeah they got that right wing playmaker and alexandrov okay all right so let's let's see what uh goes here next uh, Sestito, defensive defenseman for the Devils. Blue Jackets get a center playmaker, Acton. Uh, left wing sniper Kwong goes to the Islanders. And, uh, the right wing sniper goes to the Penguins, Prokop. Alright, let's see if this drop down to top sixes already. Looks like it. Looks like that's pretty standard here, but there might be an elite jumping out. What if that other center lasts? He hasn't gone yet. I don't think he will. But ninth is right here. He might actually. Holy shit! Did he or maybe was I was I looking at someone completely different? I thought there was a center a bit earlier, and maybe there wasn't. Maybe, I, th I don't think it was a center. No, no, it wasn't a center. It was something else. It was that guy, or maybe I don't know. It was it was a two way forward. I thought <laughs> maybe oh that guy. Yeah, that guy. It was it would have been him. And yeah, he was listed at seventh. There's no way he's gonna go out of order that long. So yeah, I think we'll go a bit off the board here. And trade back for that two-way forward center. We did pick a, a lot of... Or no, sorry, the playmaking center. I like the fact that he doesn't have any weaknesses. And again, we're kind of hedging our bets a bit with in case Manning isn't the guy. That's what we're kind of doing with this. And again, we also lack a lot of face-off talent. So a lot of our centers aren't really centers. So guy similar to Braden Shen. I kind of like that. Gets emotional but is driven to win. I don't really care about that. 
every, everything else kind of looks really good. He was uh, not quite a point a game, just below. But I like it. I, I like that he has no weaknesses. I think I'm going to want to pick off the board for this guy. Hopefully, he's a top six and doesn't drop to something bad, because that would suck. Okay, no, he is a top six. So we got this guy, Paye. I'm really excited to see what this guy's going to be. So I like that pick. All right, we'll sim up to our next pick here. We'll scroll back to see what's there. But we'll get to our last pick here. Ooh, a low elite center playmaker right there. Not bad. So top sixes, top fours. Any other elites that went? Doesn't look like it. Nope. Nope. Okay. So let's see what's available here at 32nd overall. We'll sort by our pins now. Because there might be something we want to pick a little bit off the board here. We got the guy listed at 41. We're not going to have a pick for that. Guy listed at 48. That's more of a, uh, a luxury, I'd say. It's a goalie. So, yeah, very very, very much a luxury here. Yet another uh, two-way forward. But look at this guy. He's got size. He's got no weaknesses. And look what he's got. Offensive instincts, defensive zone play, and playmaking ability. His skating doesn't look super strong, but how can you pass up a guy like this? He didn't produce a whole hell of a lot, sure, and he took some penalties. But I like everything else about him. I really do. I, I think he'll be very strong for us. So, Parker Rodriguez... I think we're gonna pick this guy over the uh the grinders nice and all but i think this guy is better so let's get parker rodriguez grab him there a little bit off the board you could say but we're looking for the right guys here and that guy is very good for someone listed to go in in the second round so our second is way back here. We're probably going to miss out on some things. That's okay, though. We're just picking with what we've got. That's what happens after you you miss the cup. So 64th, a couple of those guys would have went. A little top six there, but let's see what we got here. 64th. Now, we don't have to grab this guy till the next one, so that's cool. We should be able to grab all of these guys. So, all right, we can actually afford to make a blind pick here. Or just grab this power forward low top six. Although what I prefer... No, not really. Not a top nine with a sniper. That guy could be that, but no. I think I'd rather get the low top six guy. Ugh, weak on the skating side of things, of course. But that's kind of what happens the later you go. Um, That guy's listed as a bust, but a high bottom six. Yeah, I might as well grab that guy. I mean, of course, he's not going to be a strong skater, but we'll see if he can be some kind of a role player. Maybe he gets better in that. I mean, he's just very weak on skating, but puck protection, physical play, and work ethics all good. So that's pretty good. Would mesh well in any locker room. So, hey, that's, you know, he's got he's got a lot of pluses. He does have a lot of pluses. We're not going to, this is basically a third round pick. So what are we really expecting? I mean, top nine, but they're snipers. If they were like role players, I'd definitely consider getting them, but... Not a huge fan of that. How about this guy? No, ooh, actually. Good defensive zone play, good passing ability, good leadership, and no weaknesses. This is a top six guy. Wow, and this guy really doesn't have any downsides. Okay, I like him. Often, nope, not a top six offensive guy. I like the top six. I might actually pick this guy instead of the, the low top six forward. Yeah, this guy could be a depth guy of the future or, you know, a top six guy of the future, and we don't have... We have some of those guys, but a lot of them are getting in that no man's land of also a little bit top four and not exactly top six. So, you know what? I like this guy. I'm going to get this guy. Ruben Guerra. I like that a bit better than uh, the other picks there. All right. So, next up, should be able to grab one of the elites here. So, this is their third round. Ooh, a low top four right there. Not bad. There's an elite. I think that might have been one of the guys I, was, I uh, had scouted. Defensive defenseman. <laughs> Makes sense. But now we got this guy. Another two-way defenseman. Another lefty, though. This guy's a righty. So I'm kind of torn, but we do have a lot of righties in the system right now. Kind of switching off. We get a little, ooh, weak on the skating, mobility, and foot speed. Again, same kind of thing for that guy. Good character, work ethic, and compete level. This guy's got good character and maturity. Well, they're projects, both of them. But I think I, we do have a lot of defensive defensemen. I think I'd prefer a lot more two-way guys. Because they could either be production or shut down. And we do have a lot of righty defensive defensemen. 
Well, let's scroll a bit more. Nah. Let's just grab the two-way guy. Yeah, we'll grab Lantman. So let's grab him. See what he can develop into. It's a guaranteed elite, so that's always a good thing. All right, next pick. Now we should be able to get the uh, get the guy listed to go in the 100s here. Um, yeah, we can go for ore pick now. It's slightly out of order, but look, our scout actually has him ranked above what Central Scouting does. Listed as a gem, dude. This guy could be something special. Again, not good on faceoffs and blah 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 blah. But we'll have to, you know, change it to a wing or whatever the hell. But I mean, that's that's what happens in these in these later rounds. You're not gonna have someone with just a bunch of positives and no negatives. That's just kind of how it goes. So, of course, he has to be weak on faceoffs as a center. But hey, still a medium elite. There's also a medium elite goaltender. We really don't need those guys. So let's grab him, and then next pick, well, we'll have a few picks before we have to grab Hobbs here. So let's grab Orpic, hold an Orpic, get on my team. So there we go, another guaranteed medium elite, value if anything, we'll see uh, what he develops into. Definitely a project. So now we're in the fifth round here. We got a top nine at center playmaker, not really a fan of the playmaker. A low top nine, damn. But he does have the best value of any out of anything here. But we could also just pick right. Yeah, I'll probably just pick fast here. We still get a go. Uh, yeah, he's listed as a gem too. I really like that. Low weak glove angles and lateral movement, but good work. Yeah, would mesh well in any locker room. So those are always good things to have. So let's grab fast here, Nicholas Fast. And now into the sixth round, and then the next one with our last pick. I think we have a seven. I'll double check to make sure we have a seven. I should do that before I actually, uh, I can always trade for one, so I can, nah, fuck it, let's just check. I'm pretty, I didn't trade away my seventh, I'm pretty damn sure, but I don't want to miss out on that, that, uh, well off the board guy. Yeah, we have one. Definitely don't. So, all right, let's see what we got around here. Now, we don't have any, uh, any more guys that we have perfectly scouted here. Low top nine might be the best bet. Oh, medium top nine, center grinder. Kind of like that. What's what's his story? Weak skating, offensive consistency, etc. Good character, work ethic, and utilization. And would mesh well in a locker room. I think I'm pretty set that I want to take Haynes right here. He's looking like the guy. Our scout has him ranked lower than central scouting, which is a bit interesting. But he still is the best out of anyone here. Yeah. I mean, this guy's got a chance. This guy can only be as low as the top nine, but I don't know if there's much of a chance that he's... Plus, he's got no strength, so... <laughs> That's kind of sold me on not grabbing him already. I think Haynes is the guy to go for here. Yeah, I'm going to grab him. I like Haynes. All right, so last pick of the draft coming up, which we will use to get that uh, grinder. We got a lot of good uh, role players here in this draft and a lot of options for it, maybe even guys who could become something more than that in the future. Actually, yeah, what am I doing? Let's go to pin because he's in the 600s. <laughs> All right, so Hobbs, Chris Hobbs. Left wing grinder, a gem. No no strengths and all weaknesses, but hey, it's still a gem. <laughs> Lack the drive to win. I don't know if this guy's going to become anything. We'll see. Well, whatever. Just grab him anyway. That's some value. <laughs> okay, the draft is... Did I just see that guy... Listed as an AHLer. Is that a glitch? Hold on, I gotta check that now. I I can't be the only one who saw that. Hold the fuck on. I can't. Oh, I actually can't check trades. I can check contracts though. Hobbs, Nicholas Hobbs. What the hell? In the system here. Yeah. Hold on. What the hell? That's so weird. Was he not... Was that not fully scouted as a low elite? Very interesting. I... Maybe I read that wrong the whole time and I've been Mandela affecting myself, but I don't think so. I think he just changed right there. Very interesting. I'm pretty sure we had him scouted as an elite, and then he just dropped. That's freaking weird. Okay, well, that happened. That's a thing. Very interesting thing, but it is a thing. Okay. 
Let's go to resign phase here. So be careful with that, I guess. All right, so we got, you know what? Let's, I think I'll probably want all those guys back here. So let's see. We'll see their years left. Yep. All those guys. Some of them are bees. I mean, I could look for other ones, but these are also, well, Tom Earns. Ah, no, you gotta have, you gotta have the Liga. This guy's my secondary for East, and this guy's my secondary for WHL. So I really don't, I like, you know, I really don't need anything else. And what I mean by secondaries is I, they're the second guy I have in the league. So they're not even the priority guy. These guys, I have busy scouting, like, uh, character and skill stuff like that. Instead of getting the potentials. Very interesting. Okay, I'm gonna get all these guys back. I really like my scout team. We've done great. I don't, I don't feel the need to change anything up here. So let's make sure we can get all of them back. And then we got to do this crap. Slater. Get in, get her back. Sorry, Natalie. How rude of me. All right. Carol Walleen. That could be a dude or a chick, to be honest. The way it's spelled. Sounds European, too. <laughs> Per Tom's Tom Earns it doesn't want a long one, but I like him. All right, Uno Mas. Yep, grab you as well. All right, there we are. So we're gonna get those guys back in my squad. Yep, a lot of people, a lot of people are gonna be RFAs or UFAs here. Yeah, he sure still doesn't want a contract. Neither does Momstrom. Let's see what they're asking for. Hopefully, it's a bit less. No, he's actually asking for more now. <laughs> Shit. Great. I was hoping it might change. Okay, at least Momstrom went down, so that's good. Four years at 7.3 is not too bad. Yeah, four years at that. I can go up to 7.5 to make sure I get him. Yeah, four years at that price. 7.5 for four years. I'll do that for Momstrom. Oh, man, he sure is tough. We're, I don't think we're going to get back Ekman Larson. Why the hell does he sure want so? And I, I can't really bring him down much lower. I can try to, and I'll do everything I can to get this guy back for cheaper. But if he doesn't want the extension, they really won't go lower than what they're asking for. And do I want to pay he sure that much? Like, damn. That's a lot. Like I even right now when I did the 15% uh, discount, it's still only 12.1 for 8 years and that's a lot number 1. I'm not getting Let's see. 35. That's not too bad actually. It goes Oh, it actually goes up. So This is actually the cheapest I can get him for. It takes him until he's 35, which isn't too bad and that contract looks better over time and he produces great. I mean, that's He's definitely at this point in in NHL, he is worth 12 million for sure, but I don't know if he signs for that. I'll try. I don't think he does though. Hopefully, Malmstrom signs for what we're offering. Brizgalov, at least we could tender this guy. So, this could be a, bar a, a chip that we can use to maybe sign someone. Krebs, same deal. We could tender him. And maybe get some stuff back. Or we might just let him go. I don't know if any team's going to straight up grab Brizgalov here. But you know what? With the way Heischer's going... If we're not able to get him back, like, we could check in free agency. Maybe he wants less. I don't know if he'll be asking for, no, like, 15 mil in free agency. Although, we saw someone asking for that much in free agency, so it is possible. Oh, this is actually pretty tough here. We have the cash for it, though. I want, I think I want Sophilus back here. Oh, you know, it's kind of a real deal. Well, this is actually going to be uh, quite the busy uh, DPH row. I don't think we're going to grab back. He's an 81. We have plenty of guys like this. He's okay and all, but we haven't been utilizing him. And I don't know if we're going to utilize him. I don't think we will because he's listed as... Well, now it's saying top six, but I think that's lying because every time... Every other time he's listed as a top four. He wants a fucking great contract, though. Wow, that's a really good contract. But I think I just have too many guys. All right, Spezza here. What do you like? Decent skater. Good defensive guy. Fourth liner, I want you. Oh, that's a good contract, too. I won't go too low here. That'll be a good contract for him. Cole Iacobo, pretty sure this is one of the weak skaters. He's actually not that good defensively, either. 82, 87, 92. It's not amazing. I might not grab this guy back. No way, what the hell, Cole Iacobo? Get the fuck out. How dare you even ask me for that? Get out. <laughs> All right, uh, Barodziuk. This guy might turn into a depth slash top six guy for us, so I think I'll definitely want to sign him. 
at 24. Hopefully he wants, he does want a real deal, but we can afford that. Takes him up till he's 26. I'll do the math on this one because I want to try to save his, save a bit if I can. All right. Uh, now this guy, oh, this is a defensive defenseman. My goodness. He produced well, though. Uh, he's not. He won't up here, though. So he's definitely the more offensive guy. So he needs his entry level now. We'll sign him to the entry level. Yeah, we're really not going to need back uh, Ekman Larson. Wisniewski here. Depth guy. This guy's yet another righty. Not built incredibly. Especially on the defensive end of things. And he's going to be playing. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to have this guy. He's going to be playing. I can use him for the AHL maybe, but that's kind of it. I might want to just turn it over to other things. Hemelinen, not a strong skater, but good defensively. I want him back. Yeah, he doesn't want much. I'm just eyeballing those ones that don't matter too much. Duchesne, 24-76. Still this has an other forward. Mostly an AHL guy. And he should want an entry or an AHL contract. Yes, he does. Can I bump him up? Yes, I can. Let's just give him the full three years of a two-way deal. Because I think that's where he'll be staying. So let's just get him that. Lock him in for a bit. Alright, Tony Maloney. Now this guy's pretty weak. He's a great skater. Um, weak awareness. Good passing. But we know how that can turn. We'll see what he turns out to be. I think I should sign him anyway. I'm not just going to get rid of him without a contract. That seems kind of silly. Sunkfist. Another defenseman. Righty. Offensive defenseman. Weak on the awareness, but still, let's give him an entry level, see where he goes. Uh, Cogliano. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We do got to be careful, though. We will start running out of contracts pretty quick. In fact, we probably won't even be able to get all these guys. Jeff Boyle. Built pretty evenly all across the board. I like to see that. So we'll sign him to an entry level. I won't sign any of the guys I just drafted here. We're going to have to get rid of some, definitely. So we might not even be able to tender some of the guys that we were thinking of tendering. Uh, Ekman Larson. I, I'm pretty sure we're just going to get rid of this guy. I don't think I'm going to use this guy. So we can get rid of him. DP, I'll probably just get rid of D.P. Atro in, in that case, too. Uh, Turner, 19-64 is a low top four. I'm pretty sure we could just say no to that. Low top six, 67 at 20. Probably just saying to no to these guys. Yeah. Let's see. Well, I'll see how this one's built. Good skating. Pretty decent defense for... Mm. Again, we got to worry about the uh, roster slots, though. Okay, this guy for sure, probably not. 65 at 22. Even though he's an offensive defenseman, he's not going anywhere. So no to that. And these aren't even guys who are on contract either, so. Marish, I'm going to say no. Pretty sure that was the guy we signed for a bunch of money or something like that. 20 at 63 as a grinder. Could be a nice third liner for us. So, entry level for him. Alright, let's see. Ekman Larson wants to come back, so it's a DPHO. We're going to have to pick and choose on some of these now. Sophilus might be too expensive. I think Krebs is gone. I think we're going to start turning it over to more defensive guys down there. While Krebs is nice and all that, he's been pushed out. Our third line next year is going to consist of Bermanis and Hamus with Sim. So playing this guy in the fourth line doesn't make a whole lot of sense since he's going to command more cash than I'm willing to pay him. Yeah, I think Krebs is done. So goodbye, Krebs. That'll free up a little bit of space for us. Wisniewski, I'm still considering getting rid of. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, he's just got too low of shot blocking and stick checking for a defenseman. I'm going to get rid of him. Bye, Wisniewski. Hilbert, this was the enforcer who never really panned out. 23, still only 65 overall. This guy's not going anywhere. So he's gone as well. That also frees up his spot. That's good. We might be able to hold on to Sophilus here. But we do have a lot of these other guys coming up. And he did want kind of a bit of cash. We'll have to see what our situation is. I would like to hold on to this guy even though he's 22. Again, this could be another depth slash. 
uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, depth slash top six guy for us. Brzgalov. I might tender Brzgalov, though. Because he's kind of pretty freaking good. And I should tender, like, one of these guys. Yeah, I'll tender him since we're allowed to, since he's a pretty good guy. You never know. Maybe we get some picks for him. What kind of contracts are you after, actually? Yeah, still too much for us, I think. Sofalus. I might want to get him back. But DiPietro. What's my defensive situation looking like? If we're going to say we're likely getting rid of Ekman Larson here, so we're going to have moms from... We're going to probably take a step back, but... That's just kind of how it goes. Damn it, Honka is also an 81. So he's also listed as top six, but that usually changes. We also have this guy, these guys, all these guys coming up that we also signed. So dph has gone. He doesn't fit. He hasn't fit into our uh, schemes here, so he's likely not going any further. So we're also going to drop Ekman Larson here. He's going to decline. I I know I could use him again. And I know it might be pretty damn good to use him. But. We also got Stoll who needs a contract. Let's actually sign him. I'm hoping he gets a fat jump. I'm really hoping Pete does too. Or someone here. Vorbia, Pino, one of these guys. We really need to get a jump. Yeah, if we really want OEL back, we can get him. I mean, we can get him up for a great deal right now. Actually, not as good, but still. more than Better than the 11 mil we were, gonna, we were paying him before. He is going to decline, though. It does help to have that veteran presence back there. But we also we really need some just growth from our guys. So, yeah, let's let's get rid of him. If we need to trade for a defense, then we could do that. With Brisgolov is tendered. We have other assets here. We can find something to, to make it work. Definitely. And we're also just hoping for some jumps here. Pino, Vorbiov, someone. Stoll is going to obviously be, going to be our top two of the future. So he should be probably around top four this year. So our defense is going to be a bit weaker this year. But we should have two very strong goalies to counteract that. So that's the plus side that we do have. Speaking of goalies, they're both signed one-year deals. Henderson, 2267. It'll be like him and Owen duking it out for the <laughs> AHL. I think I'll sign him. He might also jump, and he could be, you know, good enough to be a starter in our AHL. And we're training these. He's he's on, like both. He's on pace to become a great, a, a good, a solid backup. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for out of him. I kind of want to hold on to him for that reason. Once we kind of got our our for sure number one guy, he'll he'll start being coming up for the. Uh, the backup stuff. Wilcox, 82 at 19. Holy hell. Not a strong skater. Good offense. Really good defense, but not a strong skater. Not good on faceoffs either. I have so many of these guys who are just not good on faceoffs. Honestly, I'm considering leaving them unsigned again just because of that. Let's advance a day here, though. I want to clean some of this stuff up. See how many contracts I got left to work with. We might actually get some to refuse right now. All right, that's a scout. That's another scout. We got Henderson, Duchesne. Stole. He should reject it. Damn. He wants to test the market. Maloney accepted. Boyle accepted. Barodziuk. Rejected. Okay. I was just reading what he said. Sunfist, Spezza, Golgiano. Hamalainen rejected. Too many players in my position on your depth chart. Yeah. Malmstrom also rejected. Wants to test the market. We can't lose Malmstrom. We may end up losing Heischer, but I might also just pay him a shit ton of money for one year, depending on what our cap situation is. And then hope he wants to resign for something cheaper. Like, that's always a really good option. But Ham Malmstrom, we got to get back, for sure. So we didn't want 7-5. Let's go 7-7-5 seven, seven, for four years. Let's try that out. All right, who else rejected here? I don't know if Wilcox will grow more <laughs> where he's at, but again, he's a center with shitty face-offs. Like, how many of these guys do I have? I'm just going to leave him off contracts. Because, yeah, we have 46 contracts here. Baradziak didn't like... Neither did Hamalainen. If I can get... We have plenty of cash, though. Well... I'm going to wait on uh, Heischer to kind of get the rest of this stuff sorted. This guy could just be a really, really good fourth liner. 
So I, I really would I really would like to get him. Let's bump him up slightly. We can afford it for the next couple of years. Well, let's not go too crazy. He should accept for that since he wants the extension. I still might get Sophilus back too. And then one of these guys can play depth. He wants quite a bit of cash, though. That's the only downside. So we'd have to play him fourth line. Let me take another look at Baradziak. I might just play this guy AHL anyway. Let's try that. All right. So these guys are still unsigned. Sniper. Low top six sniper. Sanderson is a low top six two-way guy. 76, 73, 77 for his defensive stats. Pretty good. And a decent skater already. They're both good skaters. I don't think I want the sniper, but I could maybe use the role player. I mean, you never know what he turns out to be at the same time, though. This McDonald guy. He did have a crap ton of points, but he is he was, you know, this last year of junior eligibility, so you, you got to expect he's going to tear it up. Doesn't have the strongest of stats, but they, he is built well for where his overall is at, and he has a very strong shot. I might want to get both of these guys. We can always trade up some space here if we really need to. But I'm going to get close to filling up the contracts here. And again, they might even ha not they might not even have room to play. So could be a negative in that light, but we'll see. Hmm. Yeah, I'll leave Wilcox off for sure. Damn, okay, he sure. What can I do with you? I would love to get you back, but let's see. I can give him one year for like a ridiculous amount. And we should be just fine with that. 17 million for one year. Let's see what he says of that. <laughs> That's a fucking lot of money. And then when it says, yes, I want an extension, then we can get him to a better deal. So we could try that out. Try to game the game a bit. But hey, it's worth it. Oops. There, that's what I was supposed to do. Uh, Sophilus, holding off on you for a bit. It's all it's all about money right now. We gotta think we gotta think about long term here. Short and long term. Alright, so we got another scout. Oh, he sure accepted, so boom. He accepted for one year at 17 mil. So that's alright. Sanderson accepted, Brodziak accepted, Hamalinen rejected still. Malmstrom still rejected, so we might have to go up to eight for Malmstrom. Which is still not a horrible deal. Especially at this point with the cap being over 100 million. Okay. So let's go up to 8 for 4 years. 8 by 4. If he doesn't accept that, it's a little crazy. He should accept that though. Brzezgal, we still got tendered. We could probably honestly get him back if we really wanted to. We could get so we can afford Sofalus, but I don't know if I want to. Get, I'd rather get back Sofalus because Brzezgalov, as good as he is, I mean, I could still hold off on both of them. I might tender both of them then, and decide which one I really want. Cause man, this guy can't play in the third line. We already have a set third line. Like Sofalus would play fourth line, and that makes a bit more sense. There's no way this guy could play fourth line. I just no way he should be. And he'll he's honestly asking for just too much. He's asking in the seven million range. So I think I'll decide to get back Sofalus here. I might let go of that Hamalainen guy. We'll see. I might only give this guy two years, too. Let's see what he wants for two. Is it lower? It's a bit lower. We can get him for three flat for two years. I think I want to take him on shorter-term deals, especially if he's going to be playing fourth line. Doesn't make sense to lock him up for three years around three mil. So let's do that. Two by three for him. We have the cap space, but it, we won't for long if we keep up this rate i'm a line and really doesn't want to get re-signed here and although he would be a very strong depth guy for us <laughs> i want him back to test him out as a depth guy 
or maybe even a fourth line guy. I don't know. I don't know what will happen, but I, I want to test it. We got rid of Krebs. We're getting rid of Brzgalov. So I think that's pretty much it here. I don't think we have any more guys. No, if as long as these contracts go through, we should have everyone back. So advance day here. Okay, more scouts. Last scout. We got Sophilus. We got Hamalainen. We got Malmstrom. There we go. So we got him for four by eight. That's not too bad. And that should be everyone. I'll do one more quick double check. Discount double check. But I think that's good. It's just should be Brzgalov tendered. Yep, that's it. And goalies are fine. All right, so that takes care of that. Now we can check out what's available in free agency. No, I don't think we'll be getting anything, but we'll see. You never know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I will do is check if I can sign Heischer. <laughs> Let's try to extend him. See if he wants the extension. Uh... <laughs> Well, shit! <laughs> Had I known McJesus was available, I would have gone for McJesus! And not gotten back. <laughs> that is goddamn hilarious. No team can afford him, I don't think. Uh. <laughs> oh my goodness, Connor McJesus is available. That is fucking hilarious. Hopefully a team signs him, but no teams are interested in him right now. Neither Eichel... T what is with this? All these freaking top guys just hitting for agency and no teams can afford him by the looks of it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So hindsight, I honestly should have waited for free agency. <laughs> and to offer uh, he sure that ridiculous amount for one year, but damn. Eichel and McDavid available in free agency. What the hell are these teams doing? The management of teams by the computers is horrific. Like how like how many how many guys have we seen? We've seen I'm pretty sure didn't McKinnon drop? Didn't Austin Matthews drop? Now we're seeing McDavid and Eichel drop to free agency. Like I guess that could happen, but my goodness. Well, I guess that's the end of the Oilers rivalry. <laughs> what the hell, man? That's ridiculous. It's honestly crazy. Wow. That is just insane. Clayton Keller, too, by the way. Also, Tyler Sagan. I mean, he makes more sense, you know. Same with Drew. Like, these, these make more sense, but, like, McDavid, Eichel, Keller, Kuznetsov. Like, Kuznetsov, I guess, makes a bit more sense. But McDavid, Eichel, Keller, that doesn't make any sense for these guys to be in free agency. Like, at all. I don't get that. They're still in their primes. I mean, I guess maybe McDavid's kind of sick of Edmonton. I don't blame him. Eichel, we haven't really seen Buffalo do much. So I guess it kind of makes a little bit of sense. But I don't know if they're going to get signed because no teams are interested in them. I don't know if any teams can afford them. So what, are they going to sit for a year? That's ridiculous. <laughs> My goodness, that's hilarious though. All right, well, anyway... Let's see if we can uh, maybe extend Heischer. Oh, we can't? Damn. <laughs> we can extend uh, Henrik, though. I probably will want to extend Henrik. Berman is two. Oh, my goodness. Henrik wants a bit. Yeah. So, honestly, yeah, that's... We gotta... At some point, we're gonna have to extend Heischer, hopefully, to something quite a quite less, but... Man, Henrik, 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 Henrik. That's a lot of... Unfortunately, it goes up. I was hoping it might go down for that, but no, it goes way the hell up there. Uh, I don't know if that'll change much throughout the year, but I'll give it some time. I'd, I'd rather... I mean, he's he's good enough. Let's, let's be real. He's good enough for that kind of money at this point. But he didn't have the strongest year last year. I don't know if he is good enough for that kind of money, though. He's never actually been a point-of-game guy. He's been close to it. He's been decent, but I'm going to wait on that. See if I can get him for a better price. Look at Boyle. Look at that team-friendly contract that Boyle has, and he produces like a boss. Same with Karpovsev. 
All right. Well, Nyquist we're obviously going to hold off on because he's Mr. Statistical Growth. But Bermanis, I think, is pretty real. He's listed as a second liner now. We'll likely have him third line plus power play. Let's see what kind of money he wants in extension right now. Yeah, quite a bit. But it might be worth it. I still might have to hold off on that, though. We'll have to see what happens with Nyquist. But this is Nyquist last year, so maybe we say Bermanis is the guy who's taken over that spot. We can see how Nyquist does this year, but Bermanis just looks like a really, really strong tool. 196 shots. Not that much, but remember, he was on the fourth line. You got to consider his time on ice per game. Look at that time on ice per game. That's kind of low. A lot of power play time, sure, but... In the WHL, he took 300 shots with that much ice time. I think, I, I might, honestly, I think this is a guy we're going to lock in, but I'm not going to do it quite yet. And of course, Keegan Pete doesn't want a fucking extension. I hate you. All right, well, I'm going to hold off on all that other stuff then. I was thinking about doing some extensions here, but I can't actually extend Heischer because he signed. I have to wait, I guess. I don't know when I have to wait to, but I have to wait. So, okay, guys, free agencies here. Connor McJesus is available. I'm going to keep an eye on it and see if teams start getting interested in him. If he's sitting there, like, that's sad. Like, and I think that's a little silly for this game, but we'll have to see what happens here. I'll check around the cap situations, too, because it still weirds me out that... Honestly, I'm going to do that real quick. What are the cap situations for these teams, and why aren't teams interested in this guy? They have money. Anaheim has money. Uh, they, yeah, they have money. They can get Clayton Keller back too. What the hell are they doing? All, yeah, teams have money. What, why did they just let him go? Maybe he didn't want to sign and they just say, we're not going to try to sign you in that case. All these teams have money though. So we should see them get signed. Look at how much money all these teams have. Yeah, we should see these guys get signed. There's no, if they don't, then there's something's really wrong with this game. If that's a thing. All right, guys. So, uh. What a weird uh, free agency pool. <laughs> Not exactly what we expected. Anyway, so this is going to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like. And if you guys like this video a lot, then there will be another franchise episode coming today. So make sure to hit that. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.